that crow is walking around trying to pick up some seed and we're trying to figure out how they were getting the seed. Well, have a look. This is how they're doing it. Hey guys, it's speaker time. Speaker time. Speaker time. Everything else is done like on the front of the truck and under the hood. Well, I gotta take the breather cover off and I'm gonna refinish that. That's another another story for another day. Um, we did get into the uh, scrap yard yesterday. Guys, I can assure you that when the Titanic sank, a GM truck went down with it. Because the tilt steering column that this young fella brought out on his shoulders. Well, I'll tell you, I would have, I would have probably been more nervous if, a, if he had to drag out a Sherman. I wouldn't have been so nervous if he dragged, it, dragged out a Sherman tank. I mean, this thing looked like it literally came from the bottom of the ocean floor, didn't it? It was bad, bad. Even the other customers was there, and we, it was this dark, dungy place. And I mean, there was hardly a light, it was cold. And I realized after the reason why it was so dark, so you can't see what you're buying. <laughs> that was helpful. Man, I mean, everybody gasped. Yeah, when they saw it. And uh, every wire on it was cut and taped with, with, with electrical tape. And yeah. the steering wheel looked like it had a shark attack. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so that was a... That, that was an, work out. That was an old go. And the cluster that he had in there that I wanted, written right on it, 1998. Uh-huh. So that didn't work. So we're still pursuing the, uh, the cluster with the uh, tachometer in it for the uh, 93 and of course the tilt steering column. We will find one local, it's just a matter of time. So anyway, right now we're going to start doing our um, change up to our speakers and our, of course our stereo. So this one is just going to be based on the speakers. So basically this here is the OEM speaker. Nothing wrong with it, worked great, still works good. Uh, it's got a master plug in on the truck that goes on here. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to desolder these two wires here and I'm going to uh, make a pigtail so I can plug these new um, Herman Infinities 6402 uh, well, 6402 CFX. They are 135 watt handling capacity and uh, they look like a very, very nice speaker if I, if I ever got sense enough to get it out of the friggin' bag. So there it is, you know, that's what you got. So, I don't know if you guys can see the difference, but there is a difference. <laughs> I can see the difference. Yeah, so I'm going to make a pigtail now. You probably could buy the pigtails, but I just didn't get them. I, I, I couldn't find them at the time, so I'm going to make a pigtail. So, uh, now, people might ask, What's the difference between negative and positive on a speaker? Well, the difference is sequence or timing. There's a number of ways you can describe it. If you hook them up opposite, it really makes no difference. In one sense, it would still work. The problem is, is you want these things in time. If you hook them up negative and positive, all the same, the cone goes, all the cones will go out and retract the same time. If you have one opposite, while one cone is going out making sound, the other cone is coming in making sound, and you lose a certain amount of bass in the process. So what you need to do is you need to try to determine what's negative and positive. It says negative and positive on this one, but on the GM one, all it says is A and B. So what's A and B? Well, you gotta get yourself a chart. This one here I pulled from the internet, and say for instance on the left, front speaker, which I'm going to do now, the light gray wire will be the left. And the left says it's pin A. 
and pin A is the negative. So that's what you got to go by. You got to go by the chart. So I'm going to make up a pigtail. I'm going to come back and show you exactly what it looks like and how it looks in that particular pot of the truck. So let's get going. So as you can see, I have the wires desoldered. And what I did, I just basically put a little bit of heat on them from the gun here. And I took the ear hose and I blew the solder away. You want to make sure, guys, that you have safety glasses on doing this. You don't want to get any of that hot solder in your eyes, so be careful with that. These speakers here, like I say, are, are perfectly fine. So I got a friend of mine who has a 98 or a 99 GMC truck. And it's a work truck, and he said, hey, Paul, can I have the old speakers? And I said, yeah, sure you can. So he'll take his plugs now and put his on, resolder them, and reuse the speakers and hopefully get another 20 years out of them. So I'm going to go make it pigtail and then I'm going to come back and show you how it works. So folks, now you can see uh, the two different connectors which will go on here. One's big and one's small. Everything should be soldered as you see here and then I'm going to heat shrink everything on and I'll come back then and I'll show you what the finished uh, connector will look like. Wow, <laughs> what a mess of wiring. Nah, it's not bad. No? Nah. Nah, nothing to it. I guess it depends on who you ask. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, look, we have emails coming in. Lots of emails. Everything's going beep, and there's tweets, and there's everything. <laughs> She's all lit up. She's all lit up. Yeah, so now we know that uh, that cavity A is the negative, and we know that the small one goes with the negative here, so that's right. So now we have to move up here yonder. We have to solder this wire on here. Well, how good are you getting at close-ups, Kathy? I'm real good. Are you? Well, you're pretty confident, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Now, of course, I should have this on something more steady, but you know how it is. You know how it is. So that's, uh, that's that. Now, what I like to do is seeing this is going to be out here in the open, kind of like to put a little bit of heat shrink on that. And this is going to be a little bit on the big side, but it is what it is. So I'll have to plug in my, i got so many cords on the go here. Hang on now. There you go. I'll see if that big one will shrink. It's hot on the singers. Yeah. No, this fella wants to try to take off. So what I'm going to do there now is I'm just going to put a little bit of tape right there. And then we're going to put that on. Now, Kathy, you might have to come over along there. And then come in around here. And get over right here. Well, I'm almost at the door. Is that the plan? That's what I'm working on. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm working on. Yeah. So, here's the, uh, here's the plug. And that's how that plug is going to go on. It's going to go on here. Up there. Like that. And he'll plug in there and he'll plug in the speaker, that'll tuck down. And then uh, that's my pigtail for my speaker. And then it's going to mount the speaker. The grill goes on, it slides in that way, and then clicks down. Like the Sachi's, boys, just nothing to it. So that's what the pigtail looks like, guys. It's, uh, it'll work. And like I say, it's all soldered. And it's going to hook on to to here and just stuff down there. There's lots of room there. It's a lot better to do it that way, guys, than it is to cut the harness up. 
Now, if you were running an amp and stuff, you might want to uh, you might want to run a whole new set of speaker wire, but this is uh, sufficiently big for what I'm using. I'm not going to run an amp, although when you see the stereo that I'm using, it uh, it's probably one of the most uh, powerful DIN ones on the market. So uh, it's it's I think it's around 400 watts. So it still should give it a decent sound. But anyway, I'm going to go plug this in now because Kathy has gone again. And I'm just going to tuck it all down. Before I put the grill on, I'll show you what it's like. So that's what it looks like. Plugged in and ready to be tucked down in the hole. Like I say, it's a lot better to do it this way than it is to cut the harness. Folks, this came with the, these speakers came with some uh, foam. I didn't really use the foam because the screws are so short to hold the speakers down. I would have had trouble installing them. So there's the speaker in place there now. So it's, uh, they fit really good. It's a little bit of a confined area, but they will go in. And there's the speaker grill back in place. So now I have to move over to that side. So there's the other pigtail, folks. That's for uh, speaker number two, right hand front. And uh, the dark green wire will be your positive wire. So just make sure you don't get your negatives or your polarity mixed up, your negatives and your positives. They should all match that way your your speakers are all in series. They're all, they're all working back and forth the same way they're supposed to work. Okay guys, here's the other one. Fit perfect. No issues. Um, I did break off the clip. Well, it never broke off the clip. It let go from the plastic. So I just basically stuck it back on and drove the soldering iron down and got, got it flared up with a bit of uh, a bit of that plastic and it's going to work out okay. So just a little trick that you can try if, it, uh, if yours break. And uh, let's see, there you go. Nothing to it. Just had a guy stop in here, a friend of mine. Anyway, he saw me welding the negative and the positive on the speaker. He said, well, what would happen if you had them mixed up? And of course, I told him that it would play the song backwards. And good Lord, we, he, he couldn't believe it. So he said, man, he said, I never thought that would happen. And then we got on to another subject, and he just left, and I forgot to tell him the difference. So, oh, my Lord, if he watches this video, he's going to be so mad. Now we have to tackle the back speakers. Okay, for anybody that's taken or wants to put speakers in the back of these old trucks, first thing got to come out is this panel that goes along there. There is the panel right down there and yes you're probably going to crack a uh, a clip because even when these things were new and we had to repair these at the dealership we cracked them customer didn't know it but we cracked them so not too serious there's other places you can move the clips to keep it tight so what you have to do first you have to uh, remove the upper part of your seat belt, which is here, and that goes up here. Then, let me take you over here, and let me show you. You have to remove this trim coming up here, if you so have it. And it just basically pulls down. Now, you don't necessarily have to take out that this piece here. What you can do is you can cheat. Let the screws go down here. There's three or four screw holes. And you can let them go and you can pull this panel out enough where you can see where the speaker is to. So you can uh, you'll be able to change that speaker like that. So that's what I'm going to attempt to do next. Oh yes, and if anybody has the jack behind the seat all that system has to be removed as well. That's the first time the jack has ever been out of this truck, literally. So how you remove the jack is you take the jack, the jack mechanism out and holding this down to the floor is this thing. And you just basically unscrew it and that'll all pull out. So there's the, uh, there's the back speaker. 
With regards to that foam that I talked about earlier, I just noticed on this speaker here, they have foam on top of this speaker. So maybe that foam is not intended to go under the speaker. Maybe it's intended on going on top and keep the uh, grill from vibrating. I don't think I'm going to have that problem, but if I do, I'll just remove the grill and uh, put that on. But the back, the back speakers, I will be putting the foam on just like the uh, OEM, as you can see there. Anybody who's trying to get this connector off those speakers, by the way, you got to reach in. There's a little clip here on the bottom. But the problem is, is that clip is actually epoxied in or glued in. So you can, uh, you're going to have a bit of a hard time. You'll get it. You just have to force it a bit. And as you can see with this speaker here in the back, there was a bit of green corrosion on the speaker wires. And it still worked, but just goes to show, you know, maybe that's what goes wrong with these speakers back there. The uh, corrosion gets to them, the moisture. Okay, so as you can see, I have the uh, foam put there. Just in case the, uh, the plastic cover started to vibrate, this, this should prevent that from happening. And there's the, the pigtail. So it's only a matter of going over now and installing this side. Isn't it cool? You get these little infinity uh, emblems to go on the inside of your vehicle. Wowzers, wowzers, wowzers. Anyway, I did the last speaker. I didn't show that because that's just repetitive of the other one. And I got the trim all back and the jack is back and everything's pretty well put back together. So I got to, uh, I guess the next thing I got to tackle now is the stereo. I have a new steering wheel coming for it as well, trailer mirrors coming for it. I have a pile of other stuff that I'm going to uh, try to get on it, but I'm just taking my time. And uh, it's going to make a difference to the old fella. Well folks, that's it for the uh, speaker install. So a few people had asked me to show them how I did it. That's how I did it. <laughs> it's not a big lot to it. You just want to make sure that you have the polarity right on the speakers so they can be in sync. Instead of working like that, they're working like that. Very simple. And of course, always make sure you download your wiring diagram for your stereo. And uh, just take your time, that's all. It's uh, Probably would have saved a bit more time if I had to have if I had to have bought the pigtails for the speakers, but I really didn't see them at the time I ordered them, so hey, it don't matter. An extra half an hour won't kill me one way or the other. So folks, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It's uh it's something anyway to look at. And uh I'm gonna move on to the stereo now, so that'll be another video. So you guys take care, it's Saturday evening. It's uh, about plus five here Celsius. It's not real warm, but it's not bad. It's nice. It's sunny, and there's no snow on the ground, or just little patches of it in places. That's about it. So you guys have a nice uh, weekend. Look after yourselves. Don't go texting and driving. Uh, it's just killing people. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. So take care, and God bless.